There we go. Sorry, the memory card got full. Forgot I was using an old memory card. Alright. USB functions, 8 USB ports, USB 2.0 controller we want to enable. I'm going to disable the onboard Azalea Audio because I have a Sound Blaster Audio GSE in there. Onboard LAN control we want to enable. You can actually boot from the LAN if you hit the boot ROM installed. Uh, boot order. Very, very full featured. Uh, BIOS, it's amazing actually. So, performance. Looky here, I've already seen this before with the other board whenever I was able to get it to post, uh, the one I had to return, so this is not a big surprise to me, but it will be to some of you. Uh, this BIOS for a, uh, this board, for a $40 board, uh, actually offers some overclocking features. And by that, I mean not only does it offer CPU frequency setting, which most even low-end boards do nowadays, but it actually has voltage configuration. You can adjust the CPU voltage up to an additional 0.150 volts. That's not, uh, you know, that's a lot less than you would see on a, a mainstream overclocking board, but that's still quite a bit, and that can make... You know, that's a good five or 600 megahertz difference there, uh, potentially, depending on the CPU. So, we'll leave it at default for now. You can adjust the front, spot, front side bus voltage, which is also called VTT. Uh, you have up to uh, 0.3 volts, which is plenty. Uh, Chipset voltage you can even adjust up to 0.3 volts. Uh, GTL ref, you have reference voltages, which is amazing for a non-overclocking board or one that's not geared for overclocking. That's just amazing to have that. And of course, you have memory voltage, which is one of my gripes with that the old board that this is replacing, uh, the ECS uh, 671T-M, had no memory voltage adjustment, uh, which means that for the mem my memory that needs you know 2.1 volts. Or 2.0 volts, I had no way to adjust it. So now I can go in and adjust that to 2.055 volts and I'm good to go. I love that. That is quite impressive. Quite impressive for a $40 board. So, the front side bus I need to go in and change, I think. I can't remember what it's supposed to be for this uh, chip. I think it's supposed to be 200. We'll see. So now I'll go over here and save changes and exit. See if it shows me what the front side. Uh, there we go, 2.5 gigahertz. <laughs> Let's see if it boots the old Windows installation. I don't expect it to because this Windows installation was for that old ECS board and that was a sys. Yep, see it just blue screen. That was a SIS chipset. This is an Intel chipset. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and come in here and pump up the, the front side bus speed just because I know that it can take it. Uh, I'm going to put it up to 233 just for now. I know it can go a whole lot higher than that. I'm expecting to be able to do at least 300. But this should get us about uh, at about, this should put us at about 3.0 gigahertz. So now I'm going to save settings and exit. Two point ninety one gigahertz. Now it's going to try and boot Windows. Again. Let's see. We have an on-the-fly boot menu. Yeah, awesome. I believe I already have my Windows 64, Windows 7 64-bit installation. Yep, I do. So I'm going to install Windows. And I'm going to leave that out of this video because that will be really, really boring. Well, here we sit several hours later. Kind of a mixed bag of results. I've decided to run the CPU at 
around 3.44 gigahertz this is on its default voltage uh, actually no I bumped the voltage up but I didn't really need to it actually will boot it'll actually boot it up to 3.75 gigahertz on its stock voltage I just bumped the core voltage just for stability's sake best speed is 275.4 now the reason I'm not running it at 3.75 gigahertz it's not because of the CPU, because the CPU is will attain that speed very easily at stock voltage. It's because I only have DDR2 800 megahertz memory. So, as you can see, I already have it running at uh, uh, what works out to be 927 megahertz, I think. Um, which is 127 megahertz over the speed it's rated for. You know, why can't I go any higher? Well, the motherboard only allows for a only allows for two different memory dividers. That would be what the motherboard refers to as uh, DDR2-667 and DDR2-800. At DDR2-800 uh, the board boots the memory at, at 800 megahertz right out of the box. You can't really raise the front side bus speed any because the memory speed goes up with that relatively to the uh, bus speed. So, if you change that setting and lower it down to DDR2-667, which is 3 to 5 F, uh, front side bus to DRAM uh, ratio, if you lower it down to DDR2-667, then you can increase the front side bus speed, you know, somewhat. Which is what I've done. I've increased the front side bus speed to 275 megahertz from the 200 megahertz stock. As you can see there in CPU ID, it shows 275.4 megahertz for bus speed. So, I'm really itching to see how far this thing can go, but without memory that is rated at a higher bus speed I just can't go any further um, I do have four sticks of of 1066 memory in the uh, Knox box up here I could potentially take two sticks out of it just to see but I'm not sure I'm 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 too lazy to do that uh, this uh, 3.4 gigahertz Best speed or 3.4 gigahertz CPU speed is good enough for our home theater PC. It runs great, it works great. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the network onboard uh, Ethernet, the onboard networking, which I'm trying to figure out if it's related to the overclock or if it's a driver issue. But aside from that, uh, the board's just great. Um, I'm really pleased. It's actually uh, screaming along quite nicely uh, even overclocked the uh, Northbridge heatsink isn't getting all that warm um, Southbridge heatsink is nice and cool uh, and the CPU heat is st staying, staying nice and cool so um, I'm fairly pleased it's going to be a great machine for our home theater so now I'm just in the process of installing games and and uh, setting up Windows Media Center and all that good stuff. So there you have it. The Biostar G41-M7 motherboard, I would say, is a winner. Definite winner for the 40 bucks that it costs. Uh, the Intel Core 2 Celeron Dual Core E3300 is definitely a winner for the 40 bucks that it costs. Um being able to easily overclock it to three and a half gigahertz without even touching the voltage is most impressive um, and the fact that I got both the CPU and the motherboard for 50 bucks out the door 40 bucks if you count the rebate the melon rebate well that's just icing on the cake that's just awesome so hope you guys enjoyed the videos and I'll keep you posted on how it all works out. Catch you later.